Hello, folks. Welcome again. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. I'm just getting ready because I just watched some AEW wrestling. And oh my, what a good show of AEW wrestling it was. As you can tell, wearing my newest Macho Man shirt, the Macho Man, Randy Savage. And you can tell it's me because I don't feel like wearing... Well, actually, I just... I was bored. Uh, they had the one match. Once, once Dustin started to bleed, baby. So that, I know what's happening in this match. Let me show you pictures of... This is this is why I don't go out in public with like face covering. Because if I wore this... And if I looked... And if I went into any store... They'd think I'm a bank robber. So you get off that. And I have to delete that too. I was, I was just bored. It's been one of those days. Delete! Yes, delete! Delete! There we go. And then there's my friend's Christmas gifts. That's okay. It's time to put my cell phone away and, and it's time to get to work. Oh, and by the way, I might be employed, so... So, tomorrow! This is just a little video, little video news update. Tomorrow is going to be my last of nonsensical videos. It's going to be the top 10, or not top 10, because I'll let you guys determine that order. But it's the 10 YouTube shows to watch during the stay at home order. So, I'll do that probably tomorrow. I'll upload that before I have to fight some grandmother for the last roll of toilet paper. She didn't. Oh, I should find that. Yeah, I have to make a graphic too. I have to say, I do not make all these videos. I just put videos together. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here. I'll be talking about that tomorrow. I'm here to talk about some AEW. But before I do that, Slicks. Yes, you're always good to talk to. And Isaac Fernandez. Welcome back. You, sir. I've earned that six count.
reason why Slex doesn't get anything, because he's already a character in the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. And so can you. Um, remember, on Cinco de Mayo. Oh, wait, that was next week. That's Tuesday. I think. I might do that. I might do a very abbreviated ver Yeah, see, I don't know. See, this coronavirus thing is throwing off all of wrestling because normally I would never cover the impact after a pay-per-view because it's boring. But they had their two-night special. So I wonder what they're going to be doing. I guess we'll f stay tuned and see, folks. Also, next Tuesday. Shoot, I have to do that Sunday, too. I have a lot of stuff to do Sunday. Sunday, I'm also me. Um, well, well, also next Tuesday. I won't. I won't give away secrets, but it's going to be Cinco Media here at the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. So we'll see what happens there. So let's get back to some AEW. It starts off pretty hot. Um, we have a Cody and Darby Allen promo right before their match, and this gets us start off with the match: Cody Allen versus. Cody Rhodes, I'm sorry, Cody Rhodes versus Darby Allen. And again, one of the things I can appreciate, they're at QT Marshall's gym. It's good to see the fact that there's people there. Uh, Jamie Hayter's there. I swear it's Zicky Dice is there on the heel side. Britt Baker's there. Britt Baker's a bitch. But that's okay. Uh, seriously, they come out. Brandy comes out with Cody Rhodes. Oh, Brandy is still giving that neck tattoo a sideways look. She is not thrilled with that neck tattoo because you can tell she's like, I almost don't want to come out with you now that you have that. But it is what it is. Uh, so they start off kind of a very classic wrestling match. Uh, then they go to the outside. And Brandy, oh, Brandy's at the wrong place at the wrong time. Ooch. Darby Allen tries to spear Cody. Cody moves out of the way, but Brandy's right behind him. Brandy Rose got speared by Darby Allen. That's terrible. Between that and the neck tattoo. Hey, Brandy, I'm single. Cody had never has to know. But again, some of, for most of this is kind of a classic wrestling match. And then, like, every... And this is becoming very thematic with Cody Rose as a wrestler. Uh, the first part of the match, very slow, very technical, very NWH. Then it picks up. Uh, so Darby Allen, uh, we go to break, and Jericho's so good at commentary. Jericho should be commentator for life. And that's going to be weird because it's going to be a street fight between the broken Matt Hardy and Kenny Omega, which is weird. I don't think those two have ever, I don't think they've ever faced off, nor been part of a team together. Oh, shoot, that means I have to shave, too. Crap. This stuff to do by Friday. Darn this job. And I can't go fishing during the week anymore. That's it's going to be weird. It's the weird revolution. What can I say, folks? But, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, so Darby Allen gets plumbed on the corner when we come back. And Cody actually uses the alligator clutch to try and pin him. Comes out, uh, does the draping suplex over the top rope. Cody, except for Cody, too many suplexes there, buddy. Eventually, Darby Allen knees him in the head out of one. Um, and Darby hit the Lucha Destroyer. And then he started to work over the knees because uh, then he transitioned from that. After that, he, he couldn't get the three count, he went to a knee bar. Then he did to the, uh, the classic knee driver. He picked the opponent's leg up and smashed the knee into the mat. And then Britt Baker, then Cody rolled outside, and then Britt Baker hit him in the head with a shoe. I, I tell you what, I, I, it's the smarky, bitchy looking Britt Baker's beginning to grow on me a little bit. Because she hits him over the head with a shoe, and she's like, look at what I just did. He's like the happiest person around. That looks good. Especially her in normal clothes. Because she's way too skinny. Again, I saw her live and I'm like, huh? 
Oh, there she is. Uh, so yeah, that was weird. Then the, uh, he gets it back into the ring after he staggers around. Then they hit double air. It's uh, that's okay though. And then there was a release suplex by Cody because his, his knees his knees hurting too much. And then was an like awkward roll. You could tell because there was like a weird pause. Like the timing wasn't quite there. So it was a kind of awkward roll up by Darby. And then, oh, he did the move. He's a move thief. Shame on you. Because he did the crossroads. Again, he also did the figure four, too. And then Brandy's back. And she brings Brandy a bottle. Uh, Brandy brings her man, Cody, a bottle of water. Uh, Cody takes a sip. Darby on takes it, smashes against this. We should be a disqualification. Aubrey, you need to learn the rules of wrestling. Boo. Cody takes off his belt. Because Ari says, no, no, don't do that. So then he tosses it to one of the gun club. Uh, I think Austin Gunn got that. And uh, then Cody, Crossroads. Darby Allen got a two count. He went up for a coffin drop, but nope. Darby Allen got the knees up. And then when Darby Allen went for the coffin drop, like, Cody's a smart, wily vet because of the way that Darby Allen had him in a pin. All he had to do was roll his shoulder over. And he had Darby Allen in his own pinning situation. And Cody goes to the final for the TNT Championship, which I think is going to be at the end of May. So I've heard some weird things about it. Um, again, if you out there in the YouTube world wants to correct me, feel fine. Leave me a comment. So you don't know what you're talking about, you FPOS. You fat bastard, shut up. I think the most, I think the thing I heard a week ago, and it changes literally daily, so I have absolutely no clue. This is just wild rumor and innuendo. They're coming back to Florida because Florida, because remember, wrestling is essential here in Florida. They're considered essential workers. And so will I be. I'll be a government worker. I'll be funny. Um, so pro wrestlers are essential workers. And they they might, I've heard a couple things. They want to either go back to Jacksonville, where I know they have, they really want an open space. The Daily Theater is pretty big. The baseball stadium is pretty big. Veterans Arena is pretty big. Or if they really want to space out people, just, just go to um, Everbank Field or whatever it's called now, where the Jaguars play. Or will the Jaguars lose? <laughs> uh, so they'll have that there. I'll, but I'll tell you what. Everything aside from this, this was, a good, this was really good. A lot better than their time limit draw. Because I'm not a fan of 30-minute 30, 30 time limit draws. Or eh, okay-ish. But this, folks, was a good surf and turf match. There's another thing about Scorpio Sky. MJF said now he has the world's strongest nail, but he he, he got he cut himself shaving. Uh, I, I, how long does it take MJF to grow a beard? Because this like literally took me, at least right here, this only took like a week and a half. Like all all this facade. When did I shave last? Is it last Thursday? Yeah, all this is about a week. So again, I could have a beard growing contest with any Viking warrior. Actually, yeah. When did I have to do stuff? Yeah, I think I took it all off Thursday. Indeed. I have to clear that desk off. That's project number five tomorrow. Because one video, two grocery shopping, or two's probably fight grandma for toilet paper. Three's grocery shopping. Outside time. Oh, yeah, so it is probably about five. Outside time, hobo. Stuff, too. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. I don't hobo on Fridays. Saturday. So, I don't know how long it takes NJF to actually grow any facial hair. And if he looks like some, like, depressed high school kid with, like, rat hair on his face. You never know. 
Then next we have Musa versus Wardlow. This was pretty good. Um, it was it was good enough for being a squash match, mainly because of the fact that Musa got a slapping. I like the fact that they're letting the jobber at least slap, and that leads to Wardlow just getting agitated and even more upset. Uh, so Musa gets tossed into the corner by Wardlow to begin the match. Get, starts the uh, ramming shoulder tackles. Musa then slapped Wardlow. Bad mistake there, Musa. Then there was a spring. Then he also got in a springboard kick, which kind of st which staggered Wardlow. But the way he sold it is that Wardlow sent him off the ropes. He didn't go running off the ropes, so he kind of reversed that. He staggered Wardlow, and and this just seems to upset Wardlow even more. And then he did the thumbs up, thumbs down, choke slam, go to sleep in the corner. By the way, it looked amazing. Then he hit his F10, and Wardlow won the match. You knew he was going to win, but I'll tell you what, it was good. The Jabber guy got in some offense. It's okay. It's a ham sandwich. Then we have the, the bubble bunch. Bubble, 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 bubble. And they're doing that whole... Um, Punch through the video screen thing. And then Vicky Guerrero. I was shocked. They had um, Lou Ferrigno. The Incredible Hulk was there. A bunch of people I've never even heard of. And then, like, the last person was Vicky Guerrero. Oh, wow. Chris Jericho must have dug really deep into that IOU for Vicky Guerrero to show up. Vince McMahon is probably not happy with him. Why, that son of a bitch! You're fired! Fire can't fire me! No, that's a whole other issue. But, that's such good shit. I, that was funny to see Vicky go, Really? Really? Uh, Vicky Guerrero. A, a true diamond in the rough. And then we had our next match was Jimmy Havoc and Kip Sabian in a street fight versus the best friends. This was pretty cool. Uh, they come out, best friends come out. They just, uh, Jimmy Havoc and Kip Sabian just jump the best friends. Orange Cassidy gets nailed by a chair. Some people don't like the antics and style of Jimmy Havoc. I personally do, though. I actually miss the staple gun. Then they got the ladders into the ring and so many chairs. They did the, uh, Sling on uh, check out slingshot into the chair. That was awesome looking. Into the, not the chair, but the ladder. Then Jimmy having those ear biting, very classic English. And then <laughs> but the setup for this. So so Chuck's sitting in the ring. Jimmy Havoc says this to Jimmy Havoc, which this is actually worse than this in England, like this. I want to say this comes from medieval times when French archers like swear they would like cut these two fingers off because these are how you hold the arrow. So then every time when the English won the battle, they say, "Ah, oh, you didn't take my fingers." Or like up, up you to the French. So and I kind of stuck through that, and oh, I, I should cover that up for now. But in case I offend any English people who actually watch this, I'd be impressed. By the way. But so, so well, well, not to show this, Jimmy Havoc does this to Chuck, turns it around, and just holds his fingers here. The classic eye poke. There we go, get it kind of right over my eyes. And then Kip Sabian just runs in, drop kicks him right in the back of the head into the finger poke. Again, Jericho is right. The three students would have been proud of that move. Bravo. Uh, so this was a f again that was fun though. That English insult, yeah. Um, then the best friends get a little comeback. They hug it out, and they just started throwing chairs in the ring. Uh, Kip Sabian got strung across the ladder, but he got saved by Jimmy Havoc. Uh, Trent got pulled onto said ladder. Uh, ladders do not like the best friends there. And then there was a D Death Valley driver onto the chairs. 
And that was the hard way because they didn't have the chairs like, like facing this way. They had them like crisscrossed. That just made them stiff and rigid. That was pretty nasty looking. And I was impressed with the creativity because oh, this was a fun match. So after the Death Valley driver onto those chairs, then Kip Sabian comes up with this, the Coup de Gras onto poor, I think Chuck took like the beating of this. Eventually Havoc gets uh, slammed into the chairs. Kip got pile drives in the chairs, but then Pen Pen uh, Penelope Ford pulls Chuck out of the ring. Uh, Orange Cassidy finally comes through. There was a backdrop onto said ladder. You know, like Trent just like died. And then there's a running pile driver, the awful waffle onto the pile of chairs. There were some antics with Orange Cassie on the outside and Penelope Ford, along with uh, Kip Sabian and Jimmy Havoc. The running, the awful waffle wins the match for the best friends. Oh, let's all hug it out. No, 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 no. Social distancing, folks. But honestly, this was a fun match. This was a good surf and turf match. There was a Brit Breaker promo. This she's skinny. She's really, really tiny. Uh, how she can actually pull off being a pro wrestler is beyond me. Again, I saw her in real life only. First of all, I guess it doesn't help that the two things that turn me off about women. Well, well, yeah, the two, yeah, two of the uh, there's only a few things that'll turn me off about any woman. One, if I can see her ribs, if I can see each individual rib bone like taut against the skin, no, and pelvic bone, ugh, I don't know what it is, but just being able to see the visible outline of a woman's of a woman's pelvic bone, it's not attractive. I know the shape of the pelvis, okay. I, I know, I, I know it's, it's 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 there, but I don't want to see like the the bones. And then just to let you people out there in YouTube land know, if you're gonna be a woman, don't get tattoos of like flaming death skull zombies. It just kills the mood. Like if you get a butterfly around the ankle, that's fine. If you get like a very flowery designed heart, even if it's, even if it's on your tits, yeah. that's not really that attractive. I don't know. Again, if you get a like a little flowery foo foo tramp stamp, I'm okay with that to, to some degree. I don't want to see like flaming skull zombie demons like across your chest or stomach. That's just. No. Again, that little little um, anklet of flowers with a butterfly and like a fairy on the calf. I can deal with that. Again, I don't want to see like apocalyptic zombie death plague stuff across your back. Though that's not cool. Again, don't look like you just got out of prison, ladies. Very, very, very bad luck. But, um, oh yeah, yeah, so the Esprit Baker, and then Rebel, Rebel looks cute, Rebel looks cuter than Britt Baker, and she started off by just riding on Britt Baker, I'm like, this sucks, and then she was, she got a talk, she got a talking to by the boss, I want you to be more positive, smile, yeah, then she came out and changed move. I'm like, ah. Oh. And then she started talking about being a role model. Don't wear glasses unless you're a doctor. Boo! Boo, Britt Baker. I just like that. I just like that comical look she likes when, when she, she gets when she like hits people over the head with a shoe. That's funny. Then we have Sean Spears taking on Baron Black. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't even think this was entertaining, even though. They start to trade off hammerlocks, very amateur style headlock, because he sold the arm by Baron Black. Uh, then those chests, woo, those chops by Sean Spears. 
That was okay. Uh, it was an okay match. Sean Spears, even when he was Ty Dillinger, I don't know. He just never seemed exciting enough. Sean Spears is the chairman. He sold that from La Parca. Boo! Gimmick infringement. La Parca is the one and only chairman. Chairperson of all of wrestling. Boo! Uh, so, yeah, I might be biased against that, but this is pro wrestling. Everyone has their opinion about pro wrestling. Then Sean Spears eventually hit the C4 into the sharpshooter, made Baron Black tap out. And it was a can of soup match. When Marco Stunt tried to take on Brody Lee, he tried to make this competitive. This was just little guy facing big monster guy. This is actually pretty good. And ouch! Brody Lee was not holding back as he just hit those open hand shots. So Marco Stunt's chest and caved in Marco Stunt's chest even more so than it's caved in right now. Uh, Marco did try. He tried to DDT in the outside of the ring. He got caught by Brody Lee. He just tossed him to the ground and gave him a big boot for his efforts. And poor Marco died. Marco did. Uh, the end of the match, you know, Marco tried to get some offense in every time. Brody was just cl clubbing blows by Brody Lee. Marco tried faster technical stuff. Yeah, he got his little licks in. Just made Brody Lee angrier. Um, Marco, M Marco eventually did die of a pop-up choke slam, power slam. Wow, say that five times fast. This was good. Uh, Brody Lee, of course, won. It was a ham sandwich of a match, though. Then John Moxley's in the middle of nowhere, Nevada. He's saying, yes, be safe out there. Call, call your grandmother. Call your grandmother, people. Not, not necessarily your mother, because my mom just keeps on telling me what they're not letting people do, and it's annoying. But call your grandmother. Uh, and he talks about having a loving wife to put up with him. Because remember, John Moxley did super kick Renee for a roll of toilet paper after she tried to play hockey with it which in these trying times is, is ridiculous. Only stupid Canadians would do that. Stupid Canadians. Stupid idiot Canadians. Boo Canada! And then we get to our main event of the evening. Lance Archer taking on Dustin Rhodes. Lance Archer came out and he just killed someone. He killed a member of the production staff. I have no idea who that was. And then so it starts off, they just start brawling. Archer just smiles with his punch. Dustin, baby, he got thin off. He, he actually did a sent on out of the ring, so, that, so there, there they are on the outside of the ring beating each other up. Uh, Archer. Like, literally, like, pounced Dustin out of the ring. That was amazing to see. One big guy pouncing another big guy. There's always something good to happen. Uh, <laughs> then Lance Archer starts to intimidate all the faces. It's like, do it! Do it! Punch Pineapple Pete! Jericho's the best. He's like, punch him! Punch that jerk Pineapple Pete! That stupid idiot. That pumpkin head dipshit. <laughs> Jericho's so good in his creative use of the English language. Uh, fear. Oh, annoying skin flap. Uh, then, uh, back in the ring, Dustin got a little bit better of Oh. oh, no, yeah, so what happened, uh, Archer grabbed the chair, Dustin took the chair from him, then Dustin got kicked in the head while he was holding said chair. I don't think this is DQ, because it's not like Lance Archer swung the chair. Dustin was holding said chair. He was going to swing it at Lance Archer. Dustin got his comeuppance, and then I'm so proud of my boy. My boy, his forehead is not so smooth anymore. He did the blade job he made. Dr. D. Dave Schultz, so happy when he did the blade job because they hit it so well. Because my boy is tired of bleeding. Do a little blading. Give us a little juice and some color in this match. Finally. Although his, his red face paint hit some of the blood. Though, so it's very hard to tell. Baby, but still, I'm so happy my baby boy is bleeding in the match. So I'm smiling up above. 
doing the blade job always with the likes of King Kong Bundy. Who else is up there with me? Oh, the animal, George Steele. And I can bleed as much as I want in the wrestling ring in the sky, baby. So, yeah, Dustin does the blade job. Uh, starts bleeding, then Archer, of course, vicious punches and starts to tear at the cut. Aubrey puts on the glove, so you know it's real blood. And then Dustin in a muscle buster. Oh, uh, the, so many finishing moves are just like basic moves nowadays. Then Yay Boos, Dustin at a crossroads. Archer kicks out at one. Archer does a rope walking moonsault. Uh, QT Marshall starts to tend with, with said towel. Dustin Rhodes, Brandy looks concerned, and Cody's like, oh, man, I'm, I'm going to throw in the towel. He's like, no, so he took the towel from him, gets uh, gets caught by Lance Archer. Archer threw the towel back into the uh, face area, and then using the Iron Claw, the feared Iron Claw, he starts just to pound his head into the match, into the ring, I'm sorry. And, and Lance Archer wins by pin. And he moves on, so he'll face Cody Rhodes for the TNT title. That could be pretty interesting. Again, this overall was a good surf and turf match. So overall, AEW this week, they rebounded from, from their kind of uh, show last week. So that's always good to see. Oh, that's fine. I have one more day. And so for the rest of this week, tomorrow is going to be a little bonus video. I have no idea when I'll get that up. I'll be working on that early be before I go out and try to accomplish task number dose. And then Friday is going to be Friday night SmackDown. See, I'm going to be busy that day too. I have to, I have to wake up now in the morning. This having a job sucks, but I guess it pays for stuff. Pays for the booze. But other than that. And then next week, we'll talk about Friday. So everyone take care, be safe, and don't rob stores wearing your protective mask. Bye.